What up folks, Alex here, Mr. Alex Tech, and the DaVinci Resolve 17 livestream has literally just finished. It looks awesome, and you can now go and download the DaVinci Resolve 17 beta to check it out for yourself. There's a link down in the description below. But I wanted to make a real quick video and just show you really quickly some of my favorite new features. Now these aren't all of the big flashy features, these are some of the little things which they've added which will just make our lives a little bit easier. Those day-to-day -day things which we, content creators, YouTubers, hobbyists, whatever you want to call us, will find really, really useful. So for the first time, let's open DaVinci Resolve 17 and take a look. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve 17 for the very first time. And the first thing I want to show you is the inspector. So up in the top right-hand corner, we're going to open the inspector and you see that it looks just a little bit different. We've got some additional tabs across the top. We're going to start off with the video tab most things are the same here. We've got transform, we've got cropping, we've got dynamic zoom. The composite mode has moved down here now rather than being at the top. And then we've got speed change under here. So we can increase the speed of our clip just by using this little scroll wheel. We can also change the frames per second. And we've got duration, we've got ripple sequence, and we've got pitch correction. So it's just made life a little bit easier. We no longer need to right click on the footage and go to change speed. We can just do it from the inspector. There's also this little icon here, which is a little snowflake, which is our freeze frame. So again, if I find a point in my clip that I want to freeze frame, I can just hit this icon. It will create the freeze frame for us. I can stretch this out now, and we've got a perfect freeze frame. Just makes life that little bit easier, a little bit quicker than doing it the old fashioned way. Now I'm just gonna open up the effects library. I'm gonna to go to titles, and I'm just gonna grab a basic title and just add that onto my timeline. I'm gonna stretch that out a little bit. Gonna make this a bit bigger just by using the inspector. Now this is something we've all wanted for a long, long time. They didn't mention it in the stream, but it is there and it's awesome. If I click on the font family, I can expand this. And if I use my mouse, I now get font previews. So we can preview the font without actually having to select each one every single time, which is a huge winner. We've wanted this for ages. It makes life way, way easier. You can actually see what you're doing before you have to select the font. So that's awesome. It wasn't mentioned in the live stream, but it is there. So happy days indeed. I'm gonna open up the effects library by clicking on effects library in the top left-hand corner. We're gonna expand the toolbox and then we're just gonna to go to video transitions for starters. And you can see now all of these images have changed. We've got much longer, wider bars. And that's because we can now do live preview of video transitions. So on this additive resolve, I'm just gonna hover my mouse over the, the little button and I can just scroll left to write to actually preview the effect. Now, as you can see, I've got nothing in my timeline at the moment. So these are stock images, which DaVinci Resolve have put in there for us to be able to preview this transition, which is really handy. So we can just go through all of these different transitions, preview them directly within our effects library. And then when we're happy, we can just apply them to our footage. Now, these are all the standard built-in effects. You've got all your standard barn doors and pushes and splits. But if we scroll down, you've got your user presets here, which are ones that I've created myself. And again, you can do the exact same thing. So you can preview all of these. If we keep scrolling down till we see the fusion transitions, again, these are transitions that I've made myself within fusion. So I've got some of my glitch transitions here. You can see you can do the exact same thing with those. So all of the built-in transitions and any that you download going forward, you'll be able to preview directly in the effects library. Now, while I'm in these transitions area, you can see you've got some new ones as well. So there's a brightness flash here. There's one called camera shake, which is sort of a glitchy camera shake transition. You've got circles and another one here called crash zoom. You've also got some more. So you've got a drop warp, a fall and bounce, film strip, a flip 3D. And then if we scroll right to the very bottom, these are all my ones. Down here, we've got some more. We've got a really funky one here called paint, which is a paint on. We've got pans. So we've got pan down, left, right, and up. We've also got some rotates. And then we've got slices and slides as well. So there's a load of new, really useful built-in transitions, which as I say, you can preview from directly within the effects library. There's a really great one down here called burn away, which is this cool little burn in effect. Now that continues down to the titles. So if we click on titles, you can see not only have we got way more titles than we did before, we've got some really nice lower thirds, middle lower thirds. We've got some 
new titles. We've got one here called Background Reveal. We've now got some built-in callouts. We've just got some much nicer titles. But also, again, you can preview them. So I can preview these to see how they work. And then down here, we've got some fusion titles, which are built by Gargoyles at Work. You can check his channel out. It's down in the description below. And again, I can preview these as well. So not only do we have new titles, but we can also preview them within the effects library. And the same applies for any that you create yourself within fusion. Again, really, really awesome. We've then got generators. We've got a few new generators in here. And the same applies. You can just preview by hovering your mouse. We then go to effects. So we've got this two standard effects we had before, adjustment clips and fusion composition. And then we've also got these additional fusion effects. Now there's a bunch included. I don't think some of these work within the free version because they're using effects which aren't available within the free version, but I'll have to drill down more to figure out exactly which ones they are. But I've got some here. So I've got binoculars, I've got CCTV, I've got a colored border, digital glitch, a drone overlay, digital SLR, I'm going to skip DVE, I'll come back to that. Uh, night vision, video call, and video camera. Now the DVE is a really important one in my opinion. So let me just import some footage. So I've got this footage on my timeline and I've got this one clip above the other clip like so. Now if you wanted to do some picture in picture, maybe you're a gamer and you want to have your game playing in the background and your face just in the bottom right hand corner, before you'd have to manually transform this so that everything lines up. Now you can use this DVE drag that onto your top clip and it'll automatically scale it, put a frame around it and put a little drop shadow, which just means you can make sure it's in exactly the same place, the same size, looks much nicer. You could even go ahead and animate this in Fusion as well. And you've just got a much easier way of doing these picture in picture pop-outs. If we continue down to the open effects, you can see the same thing. We can preview all of those once again by hovering our mouse. A lot of them are the same, but they've added some really cool key ones. We've got the Resolve FX key here. We've got 3D keyer, Alpha Mat, HSL keyer, and Luma keyer. Now what that means is, if I grab this footage and put it on my timeline, you can see here we've got a green screen. We can now get rid of the green screen without leaving the Edit tab. So I'm going to grab my 3D keyer and just drag that onto my footage. I'm going to open up the Inspector. I'm going to come to Effects and I've got the 3D keyer options here. Underneath my preview window, I've got this little drop down. I just need to make sure that I'm on open effects overlay. And then I can just take my little dropper, click on the green, and now it's got rid of that green background. So again, let's just drag this guy up and we'll put some of the video underneath. And as you can say, it's cut him out perfectly. We do also have some additional controls within there so we can feather it and change some of the settings if we need to. And it just means you can do all of your green screening without having to go into the fusion or color tab, which is awesome. It's gonna save people loads and loads of time. You've got another one in here down in the transform area, which is simply called transform. I'm gonna drag that onto this clip here. Within the inspector, I've got all of these different controls. I'm gonna click on this control mode and change it to interactive. And now I'll get this canvas on the screen. And what we can do is just move this, transform it, just do loads of really interesting skews and perspective changes so that we can morph this to better fit on walls, for example, or on the ground. And we can just put this clip in different places where we realistically couldn't have done it before, again, without going into Fusion. It's just a really handy little effect, which has got loads and loads of potential. Now, the last one I'm gonna show you in here is this which I haven't quite figured out how it works just yet, but you've got the video collage. So we can just drag that on there and it has the option for four different panels here. So you can just display four videos at once. Again, if we jump into the inspector, we go to the effects tab, you've got columns and rows, so you can increase those numbers. Really good if you're doing say a digital choir or you're doing all that sort of stuff within lockdown. It's a really easy way of just adding the footage to all these different cutouts Again, saving you time, enabling you to do some templates without having to manually do it every single time. I haven't quite figured out exactly how that works. I'm still working on that, but we know it's there and we know it's going to be super useful. Next up, we've got this footage here, which is just one of my recordings. I'm going to jump into Fusion and we're going to hit play. Wouldn't it be awesome? Master product. And we have sound. So before you didn't have sound within Fusion, you now do have audio coming through on the Fusion tab which is you can make life way easier when you're trying to create title screens or do anything that you're matching up with the audio within your clip. You can do so within Fusion. 
And lastly, you can now set custom file locations for your LUT. So previously, you'd have to put the LUT within a specific folder for them to show up within DaVinci Resolve. So now if we click on DaVinci Resolve in the top left, we're gonna to go to Preferences. I'm gonna to come to General. You can see here we've got LUT locations and I can hit Add and I can add a folder. So maybe we've got a network folder or I've got an external drive with all of my LUTs on, that sort of thing. I can add that folder to this location and then all the LUTs that are saved within there will automatically pull through into DaVinci Resolve. Again, real cool little feature. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you do, give me a thumbs up. If you're excited for DaVinci Resolve 17 or you've started playing with it already, let me know down in the comments section below. If you're new here, you enjoyed this video, you wanna see more DaVinci Resolve 17 content, of which there will be plenty coming up over the next days, weeks, months, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks ever so much for watching, folks. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time. See ya.